What's up, everyone? Welcome to Ring the Bell from Isolation. My name's Joey, James Mansfield's favorite part of this channel. We're going to see any videos with that Joey Mayberry guy. I'm so sad about it. <laughs> oh, and I am the interdimensional she Ro, literally no one's favorite part of the channel because I get so much hate. No, don't say that. <laughs> oh, my Lord. We are far apart right now. Moxie, I miss you, and I feel like I can just, you know. Wait. You know, other way. <laughs> There. There oh, there we go. Oh, oh, Johnny. Who is that girl? I <laughs> we have not a lot of stuff to talk about this weekend. <laughs> Let's go ahead and take a trip to last week and talk about NXT UK that aired last week because we didn't get to talk about it. Danny Luna going one on one with Kaylee Ray. I thought this was not long enough match, first of all. Like, for it to be our women's championship match, and that's like all we got to see of it. But for as short as it was, I do think they let Danny Luna like shine a bit. Like she definitely showed us she knows what she's doing. She deserves to be there in the ring with Kaylee Ray. I like Danny Luna. I like her look, even though she looks to me like she's still a toddler, like she's an infant. <laughs> I love it. I don't know if you know, like my gear is kind of cut like that too. Like I feel like we see so many two piece gears. She's like racking, you know, kind of oh. traditional singlet. I love her. She just makes me feel really older than I actually am. <laughs> Overall, I like Danny's look. I love the jacket. I love her hair with like the different colors in the back. I feel like she's what Tegan Knox wants to look like. Yes. I also like how like her last name's Luna and if you're like a nerd and you know that's the name of Earth's moon. Ooh, supernatural. A little bit. Not in moveset, but I feel like she's trying to give us that feel. But I dig it. Yeah. I think she's just a little bit of spunk and she gave us some spunk in this match. She took some fight to Kaylee Ray. Stop. Oh my I have a Siberian husky. <laughs> His name is Loki. It's like Loki in <laughs> the Marvel Universe. And he's also mischievous, as you can tell. Danny Luna brought the fight to Kaylee Ray. As much as they allowed her, because, you know, it's Kaylee Ray. She still has to, like, be... Uh, the pinnacle of what everything in the NXT UK. There's really no one that's stepping up to her even after the match when she went after Danny and then Piper came out for the save. I, I didn't care. She's just not awing me anymore. She's not. It's like she's, she's lost some spark or something. I don't really know what it is. She's kind of like the mother Hufflepuff of wrestling. Like she's just <laughs> coming down to be like the protector. She's not coming down to like whoop some ass. She's right. just like, hey, you better not do that. <laughs> You're a meanie. Four <laughs> points from Gryffindor. <laughs> Piper looks like she's next in line, but I'm like, okay. Cool. Yeah, because then we got that weird Nina Samuels promo where it wasn't weird so much as like they were skipping camera angles. Yeah. I felt like I was skipping dimensions, which me as the interdimensional Shiro is used to. But I'm like, hey, these humans, their heads aren't going to be able to take this. The promo wasn't like the best promo, but I liked it because it gave us like some character as to who this woman is. She's pretty much just been like, oh, here's Nina Samuels. And we're like, who's Nina Samuels? Yeah. And they're like, Nina Samuels. But she's giving me like old school, like exfoliating ugliness, Shaw Guerrero NXT type deal. And I kind of really dig it. Also, the only reason I felt like it was weird is because if I was trying to do a promo and someone kept like, I'd be like, out of here. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> Anyway, that's pretty much from NXT last week. I know this week we're getting a setup because of Nina Samuels telling us between Valkyrie and Nina, we're getting a match. Are you excited for this week? If we hear Nina Samuels speak a tad bit less, yes. I want to hear her talk more. I dug the promo. I was like, okay, I like some character. Like, are we supposed to buy into her? Because you're not really giving her very much production. That's what it felt like. I she agree just, with it, that. The whole thing felt peanut butter and jelly, really. Right now, we got to give her some peanut butter and a jelly so that the girl can become a whole sandwich. I prefer bananas with my peanut butter. Everyone on this channel likes a good banana. Oh. 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 Let's us jet back to the old US, even though international travel is banned. I was going to say, we can't take a jet. <laughs> NXT US brand this week, we got to see two matches to qualify for the upcoming ladder match that's going to take place on NXT television now. Mm -hmm. So who do we have qualified so far? We've got Chelsea, Chelsea Green. Chelsea Green, Tegan Knox, Maya Yim, 
Eos Shirai as of this week. <laughs> Me again. Candice LeRae. Me as of this week. I was... <laughs> what did I say? Chelsea Green, Tegan Knox, Mia Yim, Io Shirai, Candice LeRae with just one spot left. Let's talk about the matches, then we'll do like predictions. The match that we got first was supposed to be Aaliyah versus Zia Lee, but then Aaliyah coming out, nice little return for her, and then Zia Lee was in the With some Nancy her. Kerrigan type shit. I feel like they're gonna make it Aaliyah who did it. Like, I don't think Io would do it. That just seems kind of like off the storyline they're trying to give us right now. Why wasn't she backstage with a broken nose? You're 100% right that we're gonna find out that it was Aaliyah who did it. Last time we saw Aaliyah, didn't she have some sort of minion? Yeah, Vanessa Bourne was her tag team partner. I was thinking maybe the story's gonna turn that Vanessa Bourne did it. Uh, like, that- while she was on her way out to the ring, you know? Who knows? But that's just my interpretation for now. That's what I'm hoping happens. Again, I wish she had a broken nose. Oh, it sucks that she's out, but then... Can I tell you how hardcore I popped for Io Shirai coming back? Yeah. Oh, welcome back, girl. God, I'm so excited to see her in this match. And plus, what they were filming when Io Shirai's music hit, and it was just Aaliyah standing like... Yeah, like... It was a great shot. Like, it was in perfect line. Like, she was standing just where she needed to be because we're getting such cool camera angles without a crowd being there because they're able to, like shoot from where people would be normally sitting. So mm-hmm. they're getting such cool camera angles like that. So I'm really excited to see stuff like that for the next couple of weeks. Yeah. So I feel like a lot of wrestling fans, if they're just into like NXT or WWE, they don't realize that like warehouse wrestling like this has always existed. Like oh, it's yeah. a thing. First of all, there's much more wrestling outside of what you see on your television every week. It goes to show how loud the freaking ring is when there's no crowd interaction. <sighs> and you think that maybe the ring isn't that loud, but like you're hearing without all of that distortion how loud it really is and if you are hearing that in your television please imagine as wrestlers workers what we're hearing in there it's so hard for us to communicate it's intense and i think that they're getting a little glimpse i'm going to like men's matches with like austin theory and tyler breeze at that cell phone spot and like you get to hear what the like wrestlers are actually saying and what they're doing which is yeah is cool austin theory tyler breeze match which everyone on the Twitterverse is going wild about. I think they did a really good job. Not that the other people didn't, but like knowing that it was an empty warehouse and they did a good job of knowing what they could showcase that Mm -hmm. you don't normally see on national television. So I feel like they were like, we're going to really put this cell phone thing in there. We're going to really use words so you can like really hear it. So we can like use this as a experience to give you something different than what you would normally see. I think yeah. that, that whole match was great. Uh, it wasn't just the two eye candy people in it. The whole match, their match was great. Like, I mean, did we expect anything different? No. No, like, not at all. They're amazing wrestlers. The match between EO and Aaliyah was cut short. I feel like it was just a very short match, but that's come to be expected. Like, Aaliyah is basically the workhorse jobber of NXT. That's what I was about to say. I feel so bad for Aaliyah because she really is talented, but some people are just B players. And like when I'm on wrestling tickets, I'm usually a B player. Like I can put people over like none other. You know what I mean? Like wrestling needs that sometimes. And I think Aaliyah, yep. unfortunately, that's the role Aaliyah has stepped into. I don't know if she got her time to shine, but she shines every time she's in the ring. So it's sometimes a better role to be in. She's a great performer. And it means that you're going to consistently have work if all you're doing is jobbing people too. Overall, it was cool to see Io Shirai come back. But then we have to talk about the other match that we got from NXT, which was Candice LeRae going one-on-one with Caden Carter in a it's, a, it's a decent match. It ended with Candice LeRae doing the Gargano escape, which I'm not really thrilled that she's using now. Yeah, and they call it the Gargano family escape now. And I think it's because they're sharing it. That makes me hate it even more. I'm just right. saying, it drives me crazy when they have to have the girls take significant others move set and make it theirs. Yes. It didn't make sense when freaking Brie Bella was doing it. It's not making sense now. Please stop doing this. It drives me crazy. See, this is what I think we were trying to point out last review when we said it's really nice to see Penelope Ford emerge beyond Kip Sabian. Like, it's like they're allowing them both in their own perspective matches to be the stars instead of mm-hmm. like what they just did to Candace. Like, you have to use Johnny's 
you know, finishing submission. I'm going to be real um, because I love Candice LeRae. I think she's a great in-ring performer, but she's a little stale on television right now. I think they're trying to find something to really amp her up. I don't think her booking's been very strong since she came to NXT to really showcase what she can do. Like, I can only really think about some very highlightable matches that really show us who Candice LeRae is. Like, the match with Kaylee Ray that happened, the match with Io Shirai. Really, outside of that, I'm not thinking of too many, like, notable Candice LeRae matches. I feel you on that. I do think she has a lot to show, but some part of me feels like she just seems like she's not as charismatic as she once was on the indies. I think it's because she's still doing indie charisma, which... Being charismatic on the indies is also completely different than being charismatic in front of a television audience. You're right. You, you really have to kind of like do that little bit of extra to really showcase what your overall character is. Because now these people need to see your character's motivation for coming out and fighting. Whereas in the indie scene, you really don't need a motivation to go out there for that audience. They're just like, oh, who's the next wrestler that's going to come out of the curtain? They need to have Candace get a character each week. Like, we don't really know who Candace is other than the fact that she's apparently Johnny a candy. Gargano's wife. And she likes candy and glitter. And that's all we right. really know. That's she goes over. She went over in a solid match with Caden Carter, who I want to see more of. I kind of like Caden Carter's new gimmick where she's like, goddess of the philippines like a warrior i dig it yeah they keep adding a lot of green to her in like weird places and so it's distracting me a little bit but like i'm i'm digging the sort of evolution of what she's becoming because we've before said that we kind of weren't sure what she was honestly they really did establish a bit more this week with her as far as like entrance and getting like some camera work um, so again, this whole no audience thing is kind of working. They get to take more time and show what these people are trying to showcase. That's really it. We didn't get anything on AEW or AEW Dark this week for the women, which is... <laughs> but there was a really cute thing Nyla posted on Twitter where she was essentially just standing there watching her television screen, like a backstage thing, um, and just like staring at Penelope Ford. <laughs> <laughs> from quarantine it was yeah. really cool i don't know how i feel about that because i feel like they could at least have people driving like i don't know if it wasn't aew i don't think i'd be so mad about it but i feel like because they've done the girls dirty for so long i'm like this is intentional when really it's probably because they couldn't get anyone there even if it's not like a notable women's match because none of the matches that really were on aew this week carried too much story like the story was all in the backstage segments and before and after the matches you know just give us a throwaway match i think the only two females we saw were penelope ford and brandy rhodes and that wouldn't have even been a great choice for a throwaway match so maybe they did the right thing hey joey <laughs> hey moxie it's what time is... for a boom, boom. Blast. <laughs> yeah. okay one, one more time. time hey joey Hey, Moxie. It's time for your boom, boom blast. blast moment of the, of the week. week. You go first. My boom blast moment for this week is the return of Miss Io Shirai. Once that music hit and Aaliyah's face, even my face looked like Aaliyah's, I was so happy to see her back. My boom blast is Zaya giving us some true Nancy Kerrigan Olympics 1998 vibes and like really crying about that knee. But also I feel like if she came into work during all this coronavirus and that's the only airtime they gave her, that's kind of shady. That's my boom blast. Come on, Aaliyah's return and EO's return got put on a no audience show, which kind of also sucks, so. I don't know, just a big black stick. My knee! <laughs> hey, Moxie. Hey, Joey. Where can, Where people, can find people find you? Yeah. You can find me at Joey underscore Mayberry on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. You can also find me on Facebook at the Joey Mayberry. You can find me against all social media platforms at the, that's T-H-E-E, -E, Moxie Molly. And don't forget to ring the bell, ding the bell, click the bell, subscribe. Just subscribe, okay? With the little clicky click of the bell bell. And don't forget to visit our Patreon where you can can get a lot of cool things like personalized messages. All right, that guys, is all we have for you this week. week. Bye. And maybe bye. <laughs> bye. Stay, stay healthy out there. Yes. Bye, guys.